And what we must understand this morning is that Jesus is not a way to heaven, he is the only way to heaven. And telling people that is not unloving, it's actually the most loving thing we can do for people. I remember it like it was yesterday, I was in 10th grade, sitting in the fourth pew of an old Baptist church for a funeral of a classmate of mine, his name was Eric. He tragically passed away in a, uh, in a hiking accident. Uh, my friends and I were, as you can imagine, in complete shock. <laughs> Lots of questions. Eric was the kind of guy that lit up any room he walked into. Uh, when you got to hang around Eric, you, you left feeling better about yourself and about life after being around him. And it's a lot for a group of 10th grade kids to process through that. Certainly a lot of questions and a lot of grief, a lot of tears. Something struck me in the, in the midst of my grief at that funeral, and that was the level of certainty in which some of my friends assured that he was in a better place, that he was in heaven. The reason why that struck me is because uh, at that point in time in their lives, these were friends of mine that were about as far away from God as you can imagine. <laughs> in fact, some of them ha had shared with me, hey, I, I want nothing to do with God. To make matters more interesting, I know that if I were to ask each of them individually how they knew that Eric was indeed in a better place or was indeed in heaven, I would have gotten a different response from every single one of them. I came across some interesting statistics recently that took a sample size group of Americans that essentially came to the conclusion that 89% of Americans believe in heaven, 85% of Americans believe they're going there, but only 25% of Americans can articulate why. <laughs> so let me, let's, let's run back the data real quick. <laughs> Most Americans believe in heaven. Most Americans believe that they're going there, but most Americans cannot articulate the reason of which they are going. And I don't know about you, but as far as like priorities go, <laughs> figuring out where and why you're going to spend your eternity somewhere seems to me like it should be near the top of any list that we create. As a pastor, one of the assumptions that I tend to run into when it comes to the concept of heaven is that it's the space reserved for the good people. And with this assumption comes a second assumption that's typically not said. And that assumption is that they are a part of those good people and so is everybody that they love. But the Bible, contrary to popular opinion, has a clear message on heaven and who goes there. And it is this, that good people don't go to heaven, forgiven people do. And so this morning, I simply want to take a few moments to unpack that statement. And in order to do so, we're going to go to a text found in the Gospel of John in the 14th chapter. Some context before we read this passage. Jesus is having his last meal with his disciples before he gets crucified. And he is explaining uh, somewhat the idea of heaven and who's going to go there and um, he's letting them know that things are about to change. And I love the candidness of one of the disciples named Thomas. He's like, oh, hey, hang on a second. Um, how do we know that we're going? <laughs> how, how do we know how to get to the, the, the place that you're talking about, how to get to heaven, how to get to the Father? And Jesus responds with this incredibly bold statement. And we're going to unpack this passage in John 14, verse 6. Jesus answered Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. We could translate that for our purposes this morning. No one gets to heaven except through me. Now, it is important for those of us who are Christ followers to understand what Jesus is saying in this text and it's also important if you're on the outside looking in, you're not yet a Christ follower, it's going to be extremely helpful to know what it means to be a follower of Jesus should you decide to do that. So I simply want to unpack these three incredibly bold claims from Jesus and what he's saying. The first claim is that he is the way. 
And what we have to understand this morning is this, Jesus is not a way to heaven, he is the only way to heaven. And some people would argue, Sam, that's exclusive, that's mean. No, friends, it's loving because it's true. So a couple months back, my wife and I were, were traveling with our three uh, little children. For those of you who have little kids, you know how stressful those circumstances can be, especially when you go through things like TSA. I feel like their whole job is to make your life miserable, and they do a fantastic job at it. <laughs> and so we're going through TSA, we're getting the strollers, and we've got our three kids, and two of them were a little sick, and so we needed to get home to kind of get them to a doctor and get them taken care of. And we get through TSA, and we're, we're looking for our gate, and we cannot find it. So we're looking at the screens, trying to figure out where our gate is. American Airlines going to Dallas-Fort Worth, 3 p.m. We can't find it. Eventually, we find it. We kind of, like, have that, you know, uh, uh, borderline run, which, you know, for me, being cool is, like, a high priority, and running in the airport's not the coolest thing, but if you're going to miss your flight, you got to get going. So I, I've got, like, suitcases and children in, in my hands, and we're power walking to our gate. We make it to the gate a minute before it closes. We get on the flight, we make it back to Dallas-Fort Worth. But I want you to imagine for a moment that we could not find our gate. And let's say I go up to a staff member and ask, hey, um, we're on American Airlines flight. We got three kids, two of them are sick. We need to get home. We're going to Dallas-Fort Worth, 3 p.m. What's, what's the gate? What gate do we need to go to? And I want you to imagine that this person responded and said, oh, Dallas-Fort Worth, 3 p.m., American Airlines? Pick any gate you want. It's gonna take you to where you need to go. I would have looked at that person and I would have told them, thank you for absolutely nothing. <laughs> and then imagine I went to a, a second person and said, hey, we need some help. Dallas-Fort Worth, 3 p.m., American Airlines. We, we, we've gotta find out the way to get home. And that person looked at me and said, oh, American Airlines, 3 p.m.? Yeah, I, I got you. It's D8. Now, would I look at that person and go, oh, well, that's a little exclusive and narrow-minded to me? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'd say thank you because there's one gate that's going to take me to where I need to go. <laughs> the same is true in the story of Jesus. Him making this claim it is not to be mean-spirited. <laughs> it's to make sure that the world knows that there is a way to be reunited with God the Father, to experience life and life everlasting, and it's found through Jesus. But our pluralistic society does not like it. <laughs> and so we are encouraged to say things like, under the banner of love, that all religions take you where you need to go. But let people believe what they want to believe and everything's gonna be okay in the end. And that would be like you coming up to me and saying, Sam, I believe I can fly. By the way, fantastic song. But R. Kelly, you're wrong. <laughs> uh, you say you, you believe you can fly. I go, uh, no, you can't. And if you started to make some decisions based off that wrong belief, it would lead you to a, a dangerous place. Let's say you start climbing to the top of a building and you're going, Sam, watch, I'm gonna fly. I'd be like, don't, that's, no, that's a bad idea. And if you got to the top of the building and you're like, I'm gonna jump, I'd be like, do not, I would, I would scream, don't jump. Because if you make some decisions based off that wrong belief, it's not gonna end well. Well, guess what? The same is true when it comes to the message and the story of Jesus. If people continue to make decisions based off of a wrong belief, it's not unloving to tell them that there is a way and it is only found through Jesus Christ. He is the only way to experience life and life everlasting. That is the reality. And so, and so is Christianity exclusive? In that context, absolutely, yes it is. There is one way, but it is by far the most inclusive religion. Look at the gospel in a sentence, John 3, 16. What does it say? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that, what's the next word? Whosoever, whosoever. Jesus gave his life for a whosoever. Jesus died for the bad people. 
Jesus died for the quote unquote good people. He died for whosoever. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what the color of your skin is. It doesn't matter what your socioeconomic background is. Jesus died for you and extends forgiveness for you. For the ground is level at the foot of the cross. To the spiritually puffed up person, it drives some humility in you. Because you go, I didn't get here from anything I did. <laughs> I got here because of what he did for me. And to the lowly in spirit that's thinking, I, I have no worth, I, I am not valuable, look at what I've done or look at what someone has done to me, it brings you some value because you were valuable enough to die for. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. And I can't help but think about the thief on the cross. Jesus is crucified between two thieves. One of them decides to mock him and joke him. The other decides to pay a little closer attention. And he hears Jesus utter what I believe is some of the most powerful words ever uttered by a human in history. And that is this, that Jesus looks down, fully God, fully man, looking down at the people that are executing him. And he says, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And I can't help but think that the thief on the cross is up there going, if he's ready to forgive the guy who drove nails in his hands, maybe, just maybe, he's willing to forgive me too. And there is this incredible dialogue between Jesus and this thief as Jesus is in the midst of the agony and excruciating pain of the cross where he extends forgiveness to the thief next to him. That is the power and the message and the story of Jesus. Good people don't go to heaven, forgiven people do. And I found that a problem with humanity, myself included, we tend to think we're a lot better than we think we really are. I heard it said recently that there's not one human relationship, marriage, best friend, you name it. There's not one human relationship that would last longer than 24 hours if you could constantly tell what the other person was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but think about it. Let's say you had a projector over your head that was streaming every thought that you had for seven days straight. You'd do whatever you could to turn that projector off. <laughs> and I would too. And I like to project that I'm a good person, but the reality is I'm a self-centered centered sinner just like anybody else. And Jesus offers the solution to this sin pollution. <laughs> he extends forgiveness. What do you need forgiveness from? It's from sin. We've all messed up. We've all fallen short. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. You and I deserve separation and death and, and, and being away from God. And this is the beauty of the gospel. Jesus made your mess and my mess his mess. He stepped into this earth, born of a virgin, conceived by the Holy Spirit, fully God, fully man. And he lives this life sinless and blameless. Why does that matter? For the wages of sin is death. He did not deserve to die. We did. So Jesus takes the death that you and I deserve so that we could experience the life that he deserves. And the inclusivity of the gospel is there's one way and it's welcome for all. Regardless of what you've done, regardless of how good or bad you think you are, you need help and help is in the finished work of the cross. That is why Christians can point to an ancient torture tool and say that it's beautiful. It's because of the cross that we find out why we're here. It's because of the cross that I have value. It's because of the cross that I've found my true identity and purpose in life. The Son of God became a man so that men could become sons of God. And the invitation is open for all. You can't tell me that's not good news. So Jesus is not a way, he's the only way. 
Secondly, Jesus is the truth. He's not a truth. He is the truth. There's not a credible atheist on planet Earth that would try to convince anybody that a man by the name of Jesus didn't live 2,000 years ago. But Jesus isn't saying that he's historically true. (laughs) He's saying something a lot bolder than that. He's saying, "I I am truth. And you can't experience truth outside of me. And so here's what happens. People are like, oh, that doesn't really feel right to me. That didn't sit too well with me. So I I need your help. I need your participation. Can everyone give me a a good pointer finger in the air? I'll wait for even the ones that don't want to (laughs) listen. Close your eyes. I want you to point to where you think true north is. Ready, set, go. Point to where you think true north is. Okay, now open your eyes. We've got some people pointing straight up. And OU alumni, we're glad you're in the room this morning. (laughs) Sam, that was mean. (laughs) True North is right over there. (laughs) Someone with a big clap. Yes, I got it right. (laughs) Proud of you. But but here's the deal. It doesn't really matter how much you felt like it was that way, that way, that way, or that way. (laughs) The truth is, it's that way. And your opinion or your feelings don't change the truth. You want to know why I found many people keep Jesus at arm's length away? They're not on a truth journey. They're on a happiness journey. And they'll neglect the truth if they can stay happy. Because if I embrace the truth, then it's going to change the way I live. And I don't want to be told what to do. I don't want to submit or surrender my will to his will. And so people give a myriad of responses to why they don't follow Jesus. And if you really look at it, at the core of most, if not all, is that right there. They don't want to have to surrender. They want to just be happy. Because if I follow Jesus, I can't just do whatever I want to do. What's interesting is there's a lot of absolute truths that we have no problem with. Like if you don't drink water for long enough, you're going to die. If you don't drink or if you don't breathe for long enough, you're going to die. Well, what happens if you don't have Jesus? You don't have a way to heaven. You don't have a way to get reconnected with God the Father. And you don't have a way to find your true purpose in this life. And Colossians 1 reminds us that all things, all things were made by Jesus and for Jesus. And what I love about that thought is the most hard-hearted atheist was made by God and for God. And their opinion doesn't change the truth. And in a society that is increasingly secular and all the stats are pointing to young people abandoning Christianity, abandoning the church, they don't think it's relevant anymore. You want to know what I love about our church? The exact opposite is taking place. Two weeks ago, we held the biggest youth event we've ever held in the history of our church, ever. In the history of our church, two weeks ago. And, and here's, here's, here's why it's awesome, because it's, it's not just about having a big crowd and a lot of young people. Uh, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of young people who call Fellowship Church their church home that are on fire for Jesus, that are passionate about reading God's word, and are passionate about making sure that their friends hear the greatest story that's ever been told, the story of Jesus. And a few weeks before that, we had four students preach on this stage on a Wednesday night and speak to other students in the room, and you should have heard them articulate what Jesus has done in their life. I am of the belief that in the dark times that we find ourselves living in, it's the time for the church to shine brighter than ever before, and we're seeing it take place right here at our church. So Jesus... 
is not a way, he's the only way. He's not a truth, he is the truth. And last but certainly not least, he is the life. He's not just a person to believe in, he's a life to follow. And so it's important to walk through the interpretations of this text. Essentially, Jesus is the sustainer of life itself. He is life. <laughs> it's who he is. The author and creator of it. He's the way to eternal life. But some piece that I think we tend to miss is he's also the model for life. And this is where there's some friction <laughs> in the Bible Belt of Dallas-Fort Worth. Because it feels like often everybody says they believe in Jesus, but when you look at the way that they live, there's no evidence that reflects that. And that's, that's not how this works. In fact, in John 14, later in the text, Jesus says, if you love me, obey my commands. As if to say that if you love me, there's gonna be some actions behind that love. And so don't mishear me this morning. It's not that you do these things out of religious duty uh, that says, you know, religion essentially says if, if you do these things and obey, God loves you more. That's not the story of Christianity. The story of Jesus and of Christianity is uh, Jesus loves you just as you are, but he also loves you way too much to leave you where you are. And obeying and following his commands is not to rain on your parade and take away your pleasure. It's actually to multiply it. And sometimes following those commands is uncomfortable, but it is always worth it. For if he's the author and creator of life, why wouldn't we let him speak into the manner of which it should be lived? But there are so many quote-unquote Christians who give the stiff arm to God's word and his words and throw out the blanket, I believe. Jesus is like, it's not how it works. And it's not those things that make you a Christian. It is those things that give evidence to your belief in who Christ really is. Fascinating story of a man by the name of the great Blondin. In the 1800s, he was a tightroper. And he would tightrope across Niagara Falls. And whenever he would do it, there would be a massive crowd. And so he tightropes across Niagara Falls and he comes back and people are amazed and they're like, this guy is insane. And he comes back and the crowd's cheering and he's like, who believes uh, I can do it in stilts next time? They're like, there's no way. This is crazy. Puts on a pair of stilts. True story. Tight ropes across Niagara Falls on stilts. That's pretty epic. Comes back. The crowd's losing their mind. Oh my gosh, this guy is crazy. So he's like, hey, next time I'm gonna do it with a wheelbarrow. Who thinks I can do it with a wheelbarrow? They're like, hey, he did it with stilts. I think he can do it with a wheelbarrow. Gets the wheelbarrow. Tight ropes across Niagara Falls, pushing a wheelbarrow. He gets back, the crowd is losing their mind. Who is this guy? He's like, next time I'm gonna do it with a person in the wheelbarrow. Who thinks I can do it with a person in the wheelbarrow? The crowd's like, we believe, this guy's nuts. And he's like, awesome, because I'm looking for a volunteer. <laughs> All of a sudden, not too many people believe. <laughs> Until a uh, story goes, his manager walks out, hops into that wheelbarrow, and he pushes this guy on a tightrope in a wheelbarrow across the Niagara Falls, comes back, crowd is losing their minds. My simple question to us this morning is who actually believed? The guy who got in the wheelbarrow. Jesus explains to his followers in the Gospels, you want to know what it looks like to follow me? Dying to yourself daily, aka hopping in the wheelbarrow. It's uncomfortable but if you really believe then you're willing to take those steps of uncomfort and you will look back on the track record of your life and see the faithfulness of God in every season and in every moment so two questions to those of us in the room who call ourselves Christians question number one what decisions have you made that you wouldn't have made if it weren't for being a follower of Jesus? 
What decisions have you made that you would not have made if it weren't for being a follower of Jesus? Maybe for you, it's, it's like integrity in the workplace. Everybody else is cutting corners and you decide I'm a man or, or a woman of integrity. So I'm gonna do things the right way and I, I may feel like I'm falling behind, but I understand I live for a greater purpose than just making money. I live for him. Second question, what decisions haven't you made that you would have made if it weren't for being a follower of Jesus? Sex before marriage. I I believe what scripture says. And for many people, that's an uncomfortable truth. Sex is meant to be saved for the context and the covenant of marriage between one woman and one man for life. So you say, you know what, because I'm a follower of Jesus, uh, I'm going to make that decision to wait. And while all of my other friends are quote unquote having the time of their lives, which another time for another message, they're not. (laughs) I'm going to follow God's word. And it feels like hopping in a wheelbarrow (laughs) and it's uncomfortable and you may feel alone sometimes but my friends, it's always worth it. He's the way, he's the truth, he's the life. Back to the funeral, a lot of tears, a lot of hugs, a lot of questions, but I left that funeral smiling through tears because about two years before that funeral, My friend Eric came to church with me to a similar church like this. Someone stood on the stage and clearly articulated the gospel and said, who wants to receive the forgiveness and the grace of Jesus? And my friend Eric made the decision that day to put his trust in Jesus and his life was changed because of it. And so while there was grief for missing him here, I know that one day I'll see him again. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but your funeral is coming. Hopefully later than sooner. But the writer of Ecclesiastes says that life is but a vapor, here today, gone tomorrow. So in the grand scheme of eternity, it ain't far. Do you know where you'd go? I'm not asking you, like, have you said that you believe in Jesus? I'm not asking you, did you grow up in church? I'm asking you, do you you know a moment where you surrendered the entirety of your life to the way, the truth, and the life? Where you accepted the free gift of forgiveness and grace that comes from the finished work of the cross? If not, this morning is your morning. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I believe there are many that are going to make this decision today. If you'd like to make that decision, I wanna encourage you to pray this prayer after me. There's nothing special about the words. What matters is the heart, but just say, Jesus, today I admit that I've messed up, that I'm broken, that I need help. And today I believe in you. I believe you are who you said you are, that you died on a cross for my sin and three days later you rose again from the grave. And today I choose to follow you. Every head still bowed, every eye still closed. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, or maybe it's the first time you meant it, would you just look at me? You just look up, everybody else keeping your eyes closed. Awesome. 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 So many people this morning. Congratulations. Congratulations. You have just made the best decision of your entire life. God, I thank you For every single person in this room today, I thank you for your church. I pray that we would remember who you are, that you are the way, you are the truth, you are the life, and may we never forget the only reason we're here is because of you and what you've done for us. We ask all these things in your son's name. Everybody said, amen. 
Hi guys, thank you so much for watching the Ed Young YouTube channel. That's right, and if you want to be inspired, encouraged, and challenged like never before, subscribe and click the notification button. We believe this channel can help change your life. 